good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege to come to you today to speak of the Word of God. But first and foremost, I want to greet every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, isn't it? We have a lot of things to be thankful to God, isn't it? The gift of life. Just that gift and privilege that God has bestowed upon us to know Him in a biblical way. And for all the good things that we are enjoying in life, for bringing us all here in a much greener pasture where there's an unlimited opportunities for us and for our kids as well. By the way, <coughs> The subject matter that I'm going to preach to you today is one of the most important aspects and cornerstone of our Christian faith. Of course, apart from salvation, it's the next greatest gift given to us. It's indeed a great privilege that God has given us this honor, but in spite of its importance, it is the most neglected possession or gift that we use. We treated this gift as if it's that, you know, that little glass covered box on the wall that says break in case of emergency. <laughs> Isn't it true that very often we utilize this with crisis in life? When we are at the end of the road, when we are passing on dark tunnels, long and exhausting valleys, and hard to climb high mountains in life. Although most of us are observing it, yet we treated it as if we are ordering fast food because of the fast-paced society that we are living at. We, we, we treated this lightly and not treated it as the most important weapon that we have to overcome the world that we are living at. Do you have an idea on what this that you have the greatest privilege that you need to utilize more than anything else in our work with Christ. What do you think is our message for today? By the way, who among you watch regularly the, the American TV show Family Feud? No one? Okay. Only your Filipino teleseries? <laughs> And one of the type of questions that uh, Steve Harvey is asking the contestant is fill in the blank questions. And allow me to, to ask you some fill in the blank questions about our topic today before I would even proceed uh, to the message. Number one, can you put it on the slide please? I don't see it. Okay. God shapes the world by blank. That the secret of six success in Christ's kingdom is the ability to blank. And that the most important lesson we can learn is how to blank. Slide two. Blank is the greatest of all forces because it honors God and brings Him into active aim. And that blank is our most formidable weapon, but the one in which we are the least skilled. The first and last stages of holy living are crowned with blank. It is a life trade. Slide three. Blank is not the foe to work. It does not paralyze activity. It works mightily itself. Blank itself is the greatest work. We can do nothing without blank. All things can be done by persistence blank. And the gospel cannot live fight, conquer without blank, and blank unceasing, instant, and order. Do you have an idea what our topic for today's message? Can I request everyone to rise up, please, in reverence to the reading of the Word of God? Our text is just one short verse, but it has full meaning and full of challenges to all of us Christians. Our text is found in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Let's all bow down and pray. God in heaven, 
What a great honor and privilege to come into your presence, knowing, O oh God, that when we come together as body of Christ, we draw your very presence in our midst as what your word tells us that whenever two or three are gathered together in thy name, there you are in the midst of them. God in heaven, I pray, O oh God, that as I minister your word to your people today, I pray that you're going to touch every heart, anoint every mind, O oh God, in order for us to truly comprehend, be encouraged by your word that we are about to hear today, O oh God, and the importance thereof of this message, one of the very cornerstone of our Christian faith, O oh God. In thy name, Lord Jesus, be glorified on your message today. Amen and amen. You can all be missed. Yes, our topic of discussion today is no other than about prayer. According to the dictionary, prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. Why is prayer so important to us? Why the Lord Jesus Christ has spent ample time in praying even in the busyness of his activities at the time? Why he spent a big portion of his teachings about the importance of prayer and why majority of the authors of the Bible, especially the New Testament authors, have put emphasis on the importance of this subject matter. Yet it is the most neglected privilege we have which we don't put in heart and practice. At the start of this week, when Pastor Abel told me to, to come and share you the Word of God today, I asked the Lord what kind of message He wants me to share to you today. I kept on looking for appropriate message, but the Lord led me to this to the to today's topic. And with that, it just confirmed to me on the urgency and relevance of this subject matter, no matter how spiritual we are in our faith, and no matter how old we are. That's about time that we really need to get serious on this important cornerstone of our faith from this time forth. That's why in our church I see to it that this type of prayer the subject matter of prayer is preached at least twice in a year. And actually right now we have a prayer chain of prayer warriors praying from morning to evening. We just want to fill every hour of the day in prayer because we are charged in God's word always to pray in everything by prayer, continuing in study in prayer, to pray everywhere, Praying always because when we fail, the world prevails. Let me repeat it. Because when we fail to pray, the world prevails. Do you believe on that? E.M. Bounds was an American author, a foreign, known for writing 11 books, nine of which focus on the subject of prayer. He said this very inspiring words about prayer. The part of the blame lies at our door. If we do our part, God will do His. Around us is a world lost in sin. Above us is a God willing and able to say it's ours to build the bridge that links heaven and earth. And prayer is the mighty instrument that does the work. Why prayer is so important? Do you know how many minutes do we have in a day? 24 hours is a minute in a day. Times 60, how many minutes do we have in a day? All in all, who are those who are good in mathematics? <laughs> Mental cal cal calculation. There are 1,440 minutes in every single day. But every day has exactly that 1,440 minutes. Can we not spend 10 minutes out of 1,440 minutes that we have in a day. If we pray 14.4 minutes, that is equivalent to 1 over 100 of 1,440 minutes. Doesn't God 
deserve the best minutes of our day? You know what? Seeing that numbers, 1,440 minutes, and I'm only praying two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening. Is that fair to God? When God has given us that thousand, 1,440 minutes in a day. We get so busy with, with things which we deem important throughout the day. Yes, because probably they are important and, and no judgment in here. But if we could just spend 10 minutes, 14.4 minutes, that is equivalent to one over a hundred of our minutes in a day. How would that change our life? How would that change the world? If we spend more time praying to God, give God your 10 minutes or even more, 15 minutes, 20 minutes more, but make sure to give Him your very best focus and genuine moments of communicating with Him. The late Billy Graham said, in the morning prayer is the key that opens to us the treasures of God's mercies and blessings. And in the evening, it is the key that shut us up under His protection and Savior. My question to all of you is, how many times do we pray daily? And when we do pray, do we spend quality time to God or we are always in a rush? That as soon as we wake up in the morning, you pray, Oh Lord, thank you for waking us up today. Lord, may you guide us, protect us, bless us this whole day. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23, it says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Pray is... Your faithfulness. Did you get that? That the love and compassions of God are new every morning. How can you get benefited on His love and the compassions if you don't spend quality time to God as soon as you wake up in the morning? When we start our day with prayer, we have a chance to start anew. There are new possibilities. We don't know what the day holds in its day, right? That's why we need to seek God every morning in prayer for guidance and strength. The prayer is the chance we get to recharge ourselves before a new day begins. This is where we find grace and peace. I believe no one of you forgets to charge your cell phone at night, isn't it? Right? That is an SOP. A must SOP that I have to do before going to bed. I have to charge my cell phone or else I won't have any Facebook tomorrow. <laughs> I can't text, right? Prayer is just like charging ourselves before God. So that the following morning we are fully charged. We can face whatever the day will bring us. Because we are fully charged and we can only be fully charged when we spend one of the time to God in prayer. And when we pray at the, at the end of a long and rewarding day, we are able to reflect, reflect on God's provision. Then we may bring our thanksgiving to Him at the end of the day and before Him our new concerns. As well, the true, consistent, persistent prayer should be a way of life, not just used for in cases of emergency. Make it a habit, and when the need arises, you will be in practice. The prayer is simply talking with God. We can bring all our challenges in life. We can thank Him for providing us. Today, this, this day tomorrow, it's a thanksgiving day. What a good way of giving thanks to God in prayer for His faithfulness for the past year in our lives. 
And even more, we can tell him our challenges, our sorrows, our problems to him. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know the very reason on why we can thank God in times of crisis, hardships, and challenges in life? You know the very reason on why we can thank Him at all times? You know what? The very reason is that we don't spend quality time. But if we spend quality time with God, if we are a prayerful Christian, I will tell you, we can even thank God in spite of the troubles, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the problems that we are encountering or experiencing in life. Yeah, and then you have to tell it. It says, rejoice always, give thanks. And then pray continually. No, it says rejoice always, pray continually so that you can give thanks in all circumstances. The late Billy Graham said it again. We are to pray in times of adversity, lest we become faithless and unbelieving. We are to pray in times of prosperity, lest we become boastful and proud. We are to pray in times of danger, lest we become fearful and doubting. We are to pray in times of security, lest we become self-sufficient. What a great word from a man of God, the greatest evangelist between the 19th and 20th century. He talked about the importance of prayer at all times. That's why among the evangelists that we have in the past, he was the only one, I guess, one of the few who had never any kind of intrigues or scandal. He was able to say before the presence of God, Lord, I have been faithful to you. Why? Because Billy Graham was a prayerful child, servant of God. Prayer challenges how, how we see things in life. When we focus our minds on the things about the temptations and the ways of this world fall away. Prayer helps to strengthen us, center us, and guard us. You see? We should cover ourselves in prayer to protect us from falling into temptations. And this should be the motto of every follower of Jesus Christ that no matter how bright life is and no matter how dark and hopeless a situation might be, never stop praying. If our, if our hope is in Christ, our hope is in prayer. Don't simply put your hope in Christ if you don't spend time praying to God. First John chapter 5, 14 to 15, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. Mind on this, we are charged as believers to pray not only sometimes, but always in whatever situations or occasions in life we are at. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 it says, And pray in the Spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. You see how important prayer is? The good thing about prayer is that we know that God is near us. Psalm 145 verses 18 to 19 says, the, the, the Lord is near to all who call on Him, to call to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and saves them. F. B. Meyer, the author of the great little book, The Secret of Guidance, said, The great trage tragedy of life is not an answered prayer, but an offered prayer. See? That the great tragedy of life is not an answered prayer, but an offered prayer. 
before God. The prayer is something you should do every day. It's just like breathing, eating, walking, and talking. As many servants of God said, said that prayer is just like the air that we breathe. With whole three minutes of air in your life, you're done. That's what prayer is all about. We should envelope, we should cover ourselves in prayer so that we will never fall into temptation. We will always be doing the will of God in our lives. Yes, it is true that very often we associate prayer with crisis in our life. I believe many of you have experienced this. That when you are in the tough times of your life, when you there's no way out for you because of the problems that is besetting you, that is the time that you get serious with your prayer, isn't it? That's the time that you spend more time praying to God because there's no way out for you anymore. When you are running out of steam, when you are running out of, of, of ways to get out of those struggles, that's the time that you realize the importance of prayer and that's the time that you start praying seriously and more time before God, right? But that's not the kind of prayer that we should have. In all occasions, in prosperity, in joyful moments, in tough moments when we are sad, when we are emotionally down, when we have nothing in life, when we have more than in life, that's the time that we have to pray. That's why the Bible tells us, pray always in all occasions. And yet prayer is for the most part an untapped, undiscovered resource, an explored place where untold treasure remains to be discovered. And yes and yes, it is Talk more than anything else. Many books have been written about prayer and yet practice less than anything else. And for us believers, it remains one of the greatest gifts the Lord has given us outside of salvation. Is that what a, when you pray, what a great honor and privilege to talk to the Almighty God who created the heavens and earth, the God that sustains us, that keeps us. I believe all of you know Albert Einstein, is it? Albert Einstein? They said that the uh, majority of the people, the brightest minds now, nowadays, they said that Albert Einstein is the brightest, has the, had the brightest mind ever that ever lived here on earth. Well, in 1951, while he was delivering a lecture on the campus of Princeton University, one of the doctoral students asked the famous scientist this question. The question is, what is there left in the world that needs a further study and research? Okay, that's the question. Let me repeat it. What is there in the world that needs a further study and research? And with considerate thought, Albert Einstein replied, Find about prayer. Somebody must find out about prayer. The greatest mind that ever lived, he put emphasis on what the importance of prayer is. Find out about prayer. Somebody must find out about prayer. Because I believe Albert Einstein knew that this is the most untapped resource that we should have already discovered. And yet we did not even get the chance to discover the importance of what prayer is that would change our lives, that would change our perception in our lives. And Paul understood the importance of prayer and its power. That prayer was part of Paul's life and he took it in his epistles that it would be an important part of the life of every Christian. See, Paul had spent a lot of his writings about the subject matter about prayer. That's why at the end of his life, knowing that he would be killed, still he was able to accept it, his faith. That, that should be his end. 
Mind you on this, we cannot really be a good Christian and not pray. Just like you can never have a good marriage unless there is a good communication between the husband and the wife, isn't it? If we couples don't spend time enough talking, communicating with one another, what would happen? The marriage will be what? In trouble, it will be miserable, isn't it? Though most of the time, the wives, they talk so much, right? Because they are wired like that. But it's a good thing, because it keeps the marriage, right? The prayer is the pipeline of communication between us and God. Between God and those who love Him dearly. Three important aspects of prayer. That when we pray, we have to pray with persistence. That's what our text tells us. Paul begins by saying, devote yourselves to prayer. You see, devote is spend enough time to prayer. Be serious on your prayer life. And love, cover yourself with prayer. That's what it, it means when Paul said, devote yourselves to prayer. You know, in the original language, it says, Continue steadfastly in prayer. Which means that we have to persist. We have to adhere firmly or remain devoted to it. It carries the idea of dedication. Lord, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I will spend five minutes, ten minutes to you before anything else. That is... Dedication, that is devotion. That's why we call it prayer devotion, isn't it? It is a very powerful word and in this verse it is given as a command. Devote yourselves to prayer is a command. It is not a suggestion. In other words, persistence in prayer is not an option for us Christians. It is an order from the Lord Himself. Now there's a difference between persistence prayer and a long prayer. A person who is persistent in prayer does not necessarily mean have to pray a long time. Persistence means not giving up just like that persistent widow who kept on going to that unjust judge to get the justice that she was asking for. Because some people they give up so easily. They quit because they say they don't feel like praying. That the joy is gone and praying and the feeling is gone. There's a saying that when you feel like a praying, that's the time you have to pray. George Muller said one of the greatest prayer warriors of all times had this to say about persistence in prayer. It is a common temptation of Satan to make us give up the reading of the word and prayer when our enjoyment is gone. As if it were of no history in the scriptures when we do not enjoy them. And as if it were noise to pray when we have no, we have no spirit of prayer. The truth is, in order to enjoy the word, we ought to continue to read it. And the way to obtain a spirit of prayer is to continue praying. The less we read the word of God, the less we desire to read it, and the less we pray, the less we desire to pray. Be persistent in your prayer. Second one is pray with passion. Our text tells us that we should be watchful. If you are persistent in something, it stands to, to reason that you are to be passionate about it. And actually, St. Paul says that we should be vigilant or watchful. You know, vigilant or watchful, it's the opposite of being lazy or inactive. By being vigilant or watchful, it describes passionate prayer. That you are so excited at the start of the day to talk to your God. And at the end of the day, you are still excited to talk to Him. Thank Him. For what he has done for you the whole day. You know what? The Lord Jesus Christ was passionate about his prayer life. 
It was something that he was always doing. No matter how busy the Lord was at that time, he would leave the crowd and would go to a solitude place. What? In order for him to pray, in order for him to get to church. Prayer from the heart, that's what passionate prayer is all about. It is prayer from the heart, not just from our head. That is how he taught us to pray, not only through his example, but specifically through his teaching. James chapter 5 verse 16 says that the, the, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much or can accomplish much. Fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man, person like you, can accomplish many things in life. Third thing, prayer with thankfulness. Thanksgiving. It's not good that we have to thank God only once a year because of the Thanksgiving day that we are going to celebrate tomorrow. It's not a one year thing. It says, pray always in all circumstances. Devote yourselves to prayer. Everything, every moment. If we have that opportunity, we have to pray. According to our text, Paul never fails to mention being thankful. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 tells us that Thanksgiving is the natural result of being filled and walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says that we should not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayers and petitions and let our requests be made known unto God. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, and verse 8, giving thanks at all thanks is, is God's will for all of us in Christ Jesus. Being thankful does several things. It articulates dependence, not independence. It demonstrates relationship. It communicates gratitude, proper attitudes, and it generates humility. That's what being thankful for is. Lastly, prayer engages God. Enables us people of God and enlarges His kingdom. Jesus said that without me you cannot do anything. But once we have prayed, we are ready to do anything. Until we have prayed, we can do nothing. But once we have prayed, we can accomplish anything in life. You know what? Whenever I see a woman wearing a hijab, you know what hijab? Head covering. As I am on the traffic light, and then on my side, there's a woman with hijab. That means she's a Muslim, right? You know what? I will even a short prayer for that for that for that woman. I know she's a Muslim. She doesn't know Christ, and she doesn't have the salvation that we have. I will utter a short prayer for her. You know, when I'm going, passing, you know that new Hindu temple, Highway 15, Money Road, going to Fort Saskatchewan? There's that Hindu temple in there, right? When I pass on that road, I will reach, I will, I, while, while I'm driving, I will lift my left hand and I will pray for those people. I pray to the Lord, once they gather, may you reveal yourself to these people that you are the only way, the truth, and the life that they can never, never go to you, Father, unless they will come and know who Christ Jesus is. Last week, I was parking in the downtown area as part of my work in the, one of those parking buildings. And then I parked side by side with a car that has an emblem at the back, Darwin. What does it mean? That, Mer that person is an atheist. He believes in the evolution theory. And you know what? I was convicted by the Lord. Let me pray for the, for this, the owner of this car. And I even lift my... I didn't attach the car because it might bust, right? <laughs> I just... Lord, I pray whoever the owner of this car. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will reveal yourself to him that he was not created by evolution or by mistake, that he was created by you. Would those prayers go in vain? 
I remember when I was in Saudi Arabia because I worked for seven, 17 long years in Saudi Arabia. And my, require, and my job at that time requires also long driving. Sometimes I had, I had to travel, drive by myself five or seven hours. And, you, and since you don't see anything, it's all desert and few hammers on the road. So I was, I was, it was impressed to me by the Lord, okay, you don't see anything, just hit the road, start praying. I started praying for almost five hours, praying for my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, my relatives, the world, the, the evangelists, the workers in the mission field, the persecuted Christians, the uh, spiritual revival for every nation in the world. Would that prayer go to waste or go to drain? If you pray for the salvation of your unsaved loved ones, relatives, friends, and co and, and co-workers, would those prayers go to drain or would it would just go to waste? No. There is this one story about a woman who prays for the decades, persistently and passionately for the salvation of her unsaved, hard-headed husband. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. And you know, you know what? But a few years ago, her husband got killed due to a tragic car accident. And to her knowledge, she knew that her husband died without knowing Christ. And this added to her frustration. So, and she kept on asking God, why God, why did you allow my husband to die without knowing you, without surrendering his life to you? And actually after the death of her husband, she took over as the president of their company. And one day, there was a visitor who came over to see her husband. And when he went to the garden, this visitor, a pastor, who came uh, to visit uh, this uh, the husband and asked for his husband and then the, the guard said oh no uh, he already passed away but actually his wife took over as the president of the company and the and you know what and this pastors he insisted to talk to the wife and then okay he introduced himself as a pastor blah blah and then you know what okay this lady this lady she Vent out her frustration, has her desperation before this pastor. So, you know, Pastor, I had I had I had been praying for decades for my husband's salvation, but you know what? He got killed on a tragic accident a few years ago. And then this pastor, when did he when did he meet that accident? Oh, and then, okay, in the tear, blah, blah, on his way from this one state to another, to another place. And then this pastor realized it was the same day that he hits, okay? And it was her husband who passed away, and, you know, and, uh, and uh, he offered him a hit to, to his place, this pastor. And then on their way, it's a long drive, this pastor was able to share the word of God to this deceased person. And then before he, he even reached his destination, the pastor was able to lead the deceased into true repentance and acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you, do, you know what? What the pastor told him what happened before that tragic hour, Actually, the accident happened a few hours after he was dropped off. Okay? And when the pastor told the wife about this encounter of the pastor to her husband, he said, you know what, that was the time before the tragic accident that happened, I was able to lead your husband to the Lord Jesus Christ. He cried and accepted the Lord as his Savior. Could you see how effective and powerful the prayer of a righteous person? 
That in our prayer, in our persistent, passionate prayer, God could work miraculously beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension. God works miraculously in our midst through our passionate and persistent prayer. Another one before I would even end up the message of the Lord. There is this old lady Christian who was we spent enough time volunteering in the ministry. And then after some time, she got old, and then because of her age and illness, she got confined to her wheelchair. And then one time, she was visited by the pastor, and she let out her frustration. Pastor, you see, because of my health conditions and because of my age, you see now, I, I feel like useless before God. I can't do anything. I can't do anything that I used to do before, volunteering, doing this Sunday school, everything, visiting, the, visiting, uh, 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 attending Bible studies, and doing a lot of things in the church. She was so frustrated. She feels like that she had no use anymore in the ministry. And you know what the pastor told her? You know what? The best ministry that you could ever do right now, the best thing that you could ever do now is no other than the ministry of prayer. Pray for the salvation of humanity. Pray for the salvation of your neighborhood. Pray for the salvation of those people who don't know Christ yet. And that is the best ministry that you could ever do right now, the ministry of prayer. What does your prayer life look like nowadays? Are you persistent and are you passionate in your prayers? Are your prayers filled with intensity and favor or they are weak, timid and lacking in faith? What about gratitude? How much time do we have to spend time thanking God for what He has done in our lives? And who are you praying for? We are just this kind of prayer, prayer, prayer warriors. The gimmick, member of the gimmick club, you know that gimmick club? That when you pray, you just, Lord, give me this, Lord, give me that. Give me those. Those are members of the gimmick club, prayer club. Are you praying for your unsaved loved ones? Friends? relatives and co-workers and if you're not you're not praying for their salvation what do you think will pray for them in the very first place are you praying for world evangelism are you praying for spiritual revival are you praying for God's protection for all the missionaries who have given and endangering their lives to reach out the lost hearts of this world are you praying for the persecuted Christians all over the world the Islamic countries and the, in the communist countries. And do you have a burden in your heart to see God's kingdom expand? To see this will be done? Did you, are you praying for the coming election this month? Huh? Are you praying that God will give us God-fearing leaders? Are you? We have a lot of things to pray. We will never run out of things to pray in life. Because prayer is a big part. It's the chief, one of the chief cornerstones of our faith. And what a great honor and privilege that once we kneel, that once we spend time with God, what a great honor and privilege to talk to the Almighty God, the Creator of heavens and the earth. We have and we have that access 24 7. That when we pray to God, it's always a full bar signals. Right? But it is us who make those full bar signals into one signal when we don't spend enough time praying to God. Isn't it? When you go to the basement, sometimes you have only one bar signal, isn't it? But when you go to an open space, you have, you have to get that full bar signals. It is us who do who does the doing of receiving that one bar signal when we 
are going away when we don't spend enough time praying to God. It's just like you are going to a basement and you don't hear much of God through our prayers. Prayer is the most important thing that we can ever do after salvation. Prayer! It's always available 24-7. We don't have any alibi. We don't have any reason on why we cannot pray. Because we have a lot of things to pray for. And we have enough time to pray for every day. 1,440 minutes a day. Could we not spend 10 minutes or 1 over 100 of those minutes that God is giving us? Give the Lord a big round of applause and let's all pray. Do you have a word in your heart right now to see God's kingdom expand and to see His will be done on earth as it is in heaven? God in heaven, thank you, O oh God, for speaking unto us on the importance and relevance of, of what true prayer is all about, O oh God. That we have to pray always, in all circumstances. That we have to devote ourselves in prayer, Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have all the time in the world to spend quality time with you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we should never treat prayer as if we are ordering fast food, Lord Jesus Christ. When we are always rushing, O oh God. God, in heaven, I pray, O oh God, that you have truly spoken to your people, O oh God. On the true importance, relevance of this subject matter, God. That the key in order for us to be victorious Christians, oh God, is no other than to spend quality time praying to you, oh God. That even in the darkest moments of our life, Lord Jesus Christ, when we are passing on those, on those long and exhausting valleys, those dark tunnels in our lives, when we are climbing those huge mountains in life, Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot get through all of this if we don't, if we don't spend enough time praying to you, God. That we should not only pray in case of emergency, oh God, but we should always pray, always devote ourselves to prayer it is not an option for us to do it is your command Lord Jesus Christ that we have to devote ourselves to prayer Lord Jesus you spent a good you spent quite the time oh God when you were here in earth three years for two years and you left a good example for us to path to follow Lord Jesus Christ how come that we set aside quality time praying to you, quality time reading your word, Lord Jesus Christ, when we can spend enough time on, on viewing TV shows, our telesery, oh God. God in heaven, that's us, Lord Jesus. Impress it to our hearts, Lord Jesus Christ, oh God, on how important prayer is in every, in every life of your people, Lord Jesus Christ. That we cannot live without praying. We cannot, we cannot advance your kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, unless we spend quality the time to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot do great and mighty things so that if we don't spend time to you, Lord Jesus Christ, we can never be victorious in our Christian life unless we spend quality the time praying to you, O God. We need always to be church, Lord Jesus Christ. And we could only be rechurched by you through our consistent, devoted prayer, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, so much. I pray, oh God, that from this time forward, oh God, our prayer life will never be the same again, Lord God. That help us, oh God, that our prayer life will be a passionate, oh Lord Jesus Christ, persistent prayer life, Lord Jesus. Let us, God, consider it as a great honor and a great privilege to talk to you, being our God, being our sustainer, the keeper, and the giver of our lives. Because we owe it all to you, God. All the good things that we are enjoying in life, it's all because of you, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
you so much, Father. God in heaven, thank you for your people in here right now. This body of Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, oh God, that, the, that this body of Christ, oh God, will continue to flourish, oh God. That you will continue to use this church, oh God, as a channel of your blessings to minister your grace and your purpose in the, the, the community, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to draw lost souls to this church of yours, Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for the life of Pastor Bob, uh, while the elders of this church, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you will continue to anoint them with wisdom from you, Lord Jesus Christ, the passion to reach out the lost souls of this world, Lord Jesus Christ. God, uh, I pray, oh God, that you will truly bless this church of yours, oh God. And as a way of uh, thank, celebrating Thanksgiving, oh God, God in heaven, we are thankful indeed, oh God, for what you have done to us the past year, oh God. That you truly have been faithful to all our needs, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God. That you are everything unto us. That you never fail us. That you have been faithful unto us in spite of our unfaithfulness, in spite of our shortcomings, Lord Jesus Christ. You truly remain faithful unto us, O oh God. What a great God we have in you, Lord Jesus Christ. You fill every empty space in our lives because of your doing in our lives, Lord Jesus Christ. God in heaven, we commit and trust to you, your church, O oh God. Bless this church, Lord Jesus Christ, the leadership of this church, your people whom you have called in this church. May you bless every aspect of their lives, so that especially in their spirituality, that from this time forth, O oh God, their prayer life will never be the same again, O oh God. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, this is all our prayer, and all the people of God, who will commit themselves to pray more often from this time forth. Say a big, big. Amen. We are all blessed in the world today. Thank you again, Pastor Ed. So, we invite everyone to stay for the coffee fellowship. And we want to say thank you to everyone. Take a handshake, someone. Say thank you.